Time for an exercise. If you recall, this grammar represents uh, the grammar that recognizes uh, well-balanced parentheses. And we looked, bef uh, the example we had was actually with open break brackets and closed brackets. But for now, let's just use O and C to mean open the parentheses and close the parentheses. Just because it makes the graph a bit more uh, readable than having weird symbols there. So I'm using O and C to represent open and close. Uh, and this is as before, as we had before in the, um, the grammar that we saw in the previous lecture. So now I would just ask you to uh, try to write, give this PDA yourself, try to do it, think a bit. Uh, and then I'm going to give you my solution. So please pause now. Okay, I hope you paused. So let's see. The one I did was this one. You can do a different one. So let's see how it works. I start by initializing my stack with the dollar sign. And then whenever I um, open, I push a no. Whenever I can only close if there is a no on top. So that means I can do this behavior where I open and then I do something else, which is possibly open and close. And then finally I close. Um, I can also do open and then close, which resets my set. So this situation where uh, this pattern where I do C followed by C, which means I would open and close a number of times and then eventually my stack would be empty. And then I could just do open again, which would push something. And then I could do close again. So that should also accept that. Uh, does it accept the empty string? Let's see. From here to here, yes, it does. So it kind of looks like it works. How do you know if it works? Um, either you prove it, and proving it is not trivial. The second thing you can do is you can have lots of inputs. <laughs> That's how I'd, I recommend you trying it. So I would just write a few examples and see if they are parsed. That's how I'm going to be able to evaluate a PDA if you, if you give me one. Because there's no uh, algorithm that can compare two PDAs and check them if they are correct in a way um, for all possible PDAs. That is not possible. And that's something what we actu are actually going to prove in the future, in a future lecture. So. Let's see a few examples. I'm not going to give the whole graph derivation. I'm just going to give you a few examples and conf let's see if it works with O and C. So it would go here, right? You just initialize it and then you do one O, which pushes an O and C. Yes, it can pop the O. So now I still have the dollar sign, which I can go to Q3. The derivation graph should be this one. As you can see, epsilon. And then here I can still go to Q3 but it's, there's no outgoing edge, so I cannot open. Eventually I open, I close, then I'm here. I finally am ready because I read a dollar sign and I can terminate. So does it accept the empty string? Yes, it does. Does it accept O? Two opens and close, so this would match this. And then another open, so now I have two opens. And then close and close again. So this is fine, uh, should be accepted. So let's see, we open once, we open twice. Now we have two O's on the stack and then we close once. So now we have one, one O on the stack. We push another O, we have two. And now we read two C's, one, two. Um, so finally the stack is empty and we can go there. So that's basically what happens. You can see the O's, uh, you read one O, you read the second. Uh, and then you close the first, then you open again, and then you close, close, and finally, stack is done. 